What's up, duels? I'm Ashton, and welcome to another Testing Tuesday, where every Tuesday, I try out one of Yu-Gi-Oh's many different decks and archetypes, give you a little bit about how the deck works, show some replay duels, and then give some final thoughts at the end. This week, we have Drytron, the, like, number one ritual deck. Now, we are piloting the WCQ Valencia Regional Top 4 from, I hope I don't pronounce this wrong, Oscar Pastor Ferrer. And what this deck is trying to do is it's essentially a ritual and level one spam deck that can create sort of a resource loop in order to set up a board that essentially tells your opponent you're not allowed to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Let's get into some of the cards and show you how it works. Let's start with the Drytron engine itself. We play three Drytron Alpha Thuban and three Drytron Zeta Aldeba. Now what all the Drytrons are able to do is they can't be normal summoner set and they must be special summoned with the effect of a Drytron card. But that's not a problem because they contribute one other Drytron monster or a ritual monster from your hand or field, special summon itself from hand or graveyard in defense. That's pretty important. And then they'll have an additional effect when they do that. So for Alpha Thuban, it's going to add a ritual monster from deck to hand. Keep in mind, if you do this, you also cannot special summon monsters except monsters that can't be normal summoned or set the turn you activate this effect, which this deck does not need to worry about that at all. Zeta Aldiva, whenever it does its effect, it's going to add a ritual spell from deck to hand. So these are always played at three because they are absolutely the best. They are the start of our plays. Next, we play two Drytron Gamma Eltonin. This monster, whenever it is summoned by its effect, will special summon a Drytron monster with 2,000 attack from Graveyard except itself, which gets us more bodies on the field to make more plays. Then we also play Drytron Delta Altai, which when it uses its effect to special summon itself, you can reveal a ritual monster or spell in your hand, and if you do, you get to just draw a card. Pretty nice. And then this deck also does play one Drytron Beta Rastabon. When it is summoned by its effect, you can return one of your banished Drytron monsters to the graveyard. I figure this is mostly for if you get called by or if you get hit by, say, like a Hatch Tira card or whatever, you can actually try to get some of those resources back. But otherwise, I don't think it's been very useful and it's probably the most easily cuttable Drytron card. For other starter cards, we are running two Drytron Fafnir. It's a field spell that when it's activated will allow you to add a Drytron spell trap from your deck to your hand, except itself. So that's going to let us get into our ritual spell pretty easily. Or it can also get us into Drytron Nova, which we'll cover in just a moment. The activation and the activated effects of ritual spells cannot be negated. So it's kind of like a branded loss, but not quite as good. And then also something that doesn't come up as often, but can sometimes, is once per turn, if a monster is normal or special summoned face up while you control a Drytron, you can reduce that monster's level by one per 1000 of its current attack for the rest of this turn. Next, we have the Drytron Nova that I was mentioning, which you can search off Fafnir if you need to, which allows you to special summon a Drytron from deck, but destroy it during the end phase. You can only activate one, and it locks you just like the Drytron monsters do. Not really super relevant. This is basically just getting a free body on board that you're going to make plays with. Lastly, for the Drytron spells, we play the ritual spell Meteotis Drytron. Now, this card is the key. It's searchable, which is why we only play two, and we don't quite mind hard drawing it. But this card lets the deck run because it lets you ritual summon a ritual monster from hand or graveyard. And all you have to do is tribute machine monsters from your hand or field using the attack. And the attack has to equal or exceed the attack of the ritual monster ritual summon. So when I get to the ritual summon monsters later, you're going to see exactly how that works. In addition, it can recur itself from the graveyard because if it is in there, you can target a Drytron monster you control. It loses exactly a thousand attack until the end of your opponent's turn. And if it does, add it to your hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. The ritual summon effect is not once per turn, only the recursion effect. So you can use this as many copies as you have it. Next up, for the non Drytron engine starters, we play three Cyber Emergency. Familiar if you watched the Cyber Dragon video. We play this because it literally just adds a light machine monster that can't be normal summon or set, which is all of the Drytrons. So this is literally just a reinforcement of the army, but at three. So it's pretty good. We also play three Jack in the hand because what this does is reveal three level one monsters with different names from the deck. All of the Drytron main engine starters are level one. And then your opponent will pick one to add to their hand and we will add one to our own and the shuff shuffle the third into the deck, whatever. You usually get the Alpha Thuban, reveal the Zeta and reveal Gamma. 
and grab one of those because those are the best three. Lastly, for the spell engine starters, we have Preparation of Rites, adds a level seven or ritual monster from deck to hand, and then you can also add a ritual spell from graveyard to your hand, so that's only really gonna come up if you've already used the Mediona Strytron's recursion effect and really need that second one, but just happen to have Preparation of Rites. Otherwise, this just gets us usually into like the Ben 10 or whatever ritual we're missing. Now, speaking of the rituals, let's start off with three copies of Cyber Angel Ben 10. This card is what the deck really, really runs through. What this card essentially does is if it's tributed, you can add a light fairy monster from your deck to your hand. So every time that we tribute for the effect of one of these Drytron monsters, especially summon itself out, the Cyber Angel Benton will be able to search a light fairy from deck to hand. And that is not once per turn. So we're going to loop this card over and over and over to gain advantage. We also play Cyber Angel Natasha. Uh, whenever it's in graveyard after it's been ritual summoned correctly the first time, you can banish another Cyber Angel monster from your graveyard, then target a monster your opponent controls, special summon the Natasha, and then take control of that monster, which makes OTKing your opponent super easy, or you can bait out a negate or an effect that you know that your opponent's going to need to do because you're going to threaten taking their monster. Next, we have the big boss monster of the deck, Drytron Medionis Dracondis. Your opponent cannot target this card with monster effects, so it's got protection. It's got 4,000 attack and defense also, which is crazy. If the total levels of monsters used for ritual summon are two or less, which they almost always are going to be, then they can attack all special summon monsters your opponent controls once each, which is also nuts. And then, probably most important, during your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can banish monsters from your graveyard whose combined attack equals exactly 2,000 or 4,000, then target one face-up card your opponent controls for every 2,000, so up to two targets here, send those cards to the graveyard. So two free pops that you get on the board. All of the Drytrons have 2,000 attack, which you just banish two of them, and now you have the two free pops. Really powerful card. Lastly, the card that will make everyone very, very mad is Magician of Black Chaos Max. Whenever it is summoned, you contribute one monster your opponent cannot activate monster effects this turn this literally just says and it can target itself so you literally just special summon magician of black chaos max tribute itself your opponent can't activate monster effects anymore they just can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. I <laughs> they just can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. and that's really how it goes sometimes lastly for the uh other one other one of card that we play in here is diviner of the herald we can usually search that off of ben 10 when it's normal express summon, you can send a fairy monster from deck or extra deck to the graveyard. And if you do, increase this card's level by that monster's level till the end of this turn. The most relevant thing here is we're going to send from the extra deck the Herald of the Arc Light, which whenever it's sent to the graveyard, you can add a ritual monster or spell from deck to hand. So it is incredible. We're going to use this every time that we can. Lastly, for our staple cards, we play one Vanity's Ruler because we do not need to normal summon. In fact, for the most part, outside of like exactly Diviner of the Herald, we pretty much never normal summon. So Vanity's Ruler is in here because we can very easily get two bodies on field with special summons and then normal summon Vanity's Ruler. It is absolutely insane. Shut off the opponent. It's 25 2 so it's like really big. And it is just such an impressive card. We play one Artifact Lancia. Not only is it just great because it prevents banishing, but also it is a fairy. So if we really need to use it in a pinch with Herald of Orange Light, we can to negate monster effects. Speaking of, we do play the one Herald of Orange Light, three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, three Droll and Lockbird, and then two Dark Ruler No More, plus one Called by the Grave. For the extra deck, we play Elder Entity Intis just because, I mean, it's a free pop. Why not? Herald of the Arc Glide to do that Diviner combo that we mentioned. Two Zeus, because we play a lot of XCs. Speaking of, we play one Beatrice, which can get us into our plays more often. Down Nerd for the Zeus to get more materials. Kiki Nagashi Fucho, which basically just says you get a survivor turn. Two Drytron Mu Beta Fafnir, one of the most, the probably the most important extra deck monster in this deck. When you Ritual Summon, you can detach a material from this card as monsters required for the Ritual Summon. So, because Meteora Drytron is using attack stats for its Ritual Summon, if you have Mu Beta Fafnir with two Drytrons and you're trying to summon out like a Ben 10 or a Chaos Max, then you just detach from the Drytron Mu Beta Fafnir and you don't lose any advantage. It's literally insane. And then on top of that, whenever it's uh, XC summoned straight up, you can send a Drytron card from deck to the graveyard. We're usually going to dump Gamma or any other Drytron name that we just haven't used to get more bodies on the field. 
Then lastly, when your opponent activates a spell trap card while you control a machine ritual monster, quick effect, detach your material from this card, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. So we can also, if we play it right, set this up as a spell trap negate. For the link monsters, we play Underworld Goddess, Boral Sword, Nightmare Phoenix, Link Karibo, and then the two more interesting ones are Herald of Mirage Lights, which comes up sometimes. It is also a spell trap card uh, negate. And if it is sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card, you can add up to two ritual monsters and or spells with different names from graveyard to your hand. So that's really good for like the grind game and stuff like that. And then lastly, the card that we're going to try to make all the time is Dyna Mondo. It needs two monsters, including a ritual. If it's special summoned, you target a card on the field and one ritual monster in grave. Shuffle both in the deck. Not as relevant, though, if we do go full 100% combo, it'll come up. Otherwise, the most important part about this card is during your opponent's turn, quick effect. Tribute this card, then target a ritual monster in graveyard, either add it to your hand or special summon it. What we're going to do is make this... And that's going to be our full board. It's just pretty much Dynamundo. Pass turn, draw. Draw phase, Dynamundo effect. Tribute itself, Magician of Black Chaos Max. Black Chaos Max effect, Tribute itself. Now it's our opponent's turn. They had no way to interact with us. And they can't activate monster effects. Usually just shuts down our opponent instantly. And that's the deck. It has a lot going on. Let's show you some of the replays and show you how it works. All right, for game one, we are playing against like some kind of red eyes, blackluster soldier deck. Not exactly sure because we never really give our opponent the chance to really go off with it. But we do go second here and we're going to have to see what our opponent does. And all they're going to do is just T-set and pass. Which is concerning for them. We're going to draw into Alpha Thubin while we have Cyber Angel Ben 10, Beta Rastaban, Jack in the Hand, Delta Altai, and Cyber Emergency in our hand. Pretty solid hand, it could be better, but it gets us into the place we need. Very first thing we're gonna do is activate Jack in the hand. We're gonna reveal three of our level one monsters with different names from deck. And then we're going to get one of those and our opponent's gonna get one of those. We ended up getting Zeta, which is awesome because with Zeta and Alpha, we just have full combo. We're gonna activate Thuban, we're gonna tribute Zeta, and they're gonna Ash the Thuban, which means that it will not get special summoned out. But with this hand, because we have so many other names and a cyber emergency, it's not going to matter. We're going to activate Zeta, tribute the Benton that we already have, special summon itself out, and then grab the Meteonus Drytron from our deck to our hand. We are then going to trigger Cyber Angel Benton. We're going to search Diviner of the Herald. And then we are going to normal summon the Diviner of the Herald, trigger its effect to pitch Herald of Arclight from our extra deck to the graveyard, except they do hit us with the imperm so we already have two interruptions going up against us that we are having to play through we're going to activate cyber emergency we're going to grab gamma eltana from our deck to our hand and then we're going to activate its effect we're going to tribute the delta altai to special summon itself and then use its effect when it uses that effect to special summon out the delta altai now we exes into mu beta fafnir trigger its effect to send the Drytron Medionis Dracondis into the graveyard. We are going second here, so we are looking to make some kind of big push. We're going to activate Drytron Beta Rastaban, tribute the Delta Alt to put it back in the graveyard to special summon itself out. And then we will Delta Alt tribute our Alpha Thuban, which was doing nothing in our hand, to special summon itself out, reveal the Medionis Drytron in our hand, and then add a Alpha Thuban off of a draw. That was just a hard draw off the top, which is great for follow-up. We're going to activate Meteonus Drytron. We are going to use our Gamma Eltonin and our Zeta that were both attached to the Mubeta Fafnir to get out the Meteonus Dracondis. Now at this point, because both of the monsters used were level one, then the levels of monsters used for its ritual summon are in fact to her lace, Two or less, which means that it can attack all special summon monsters your opponent controls once each. So it's great. All right. And then off of that, we are going to, now that Meteor's Dredron was engraved, activate its effect to reduce the attack of Beta Rastabon from 2000 to 1000 to add it back to our hand. And remember, the first effect of Ritual Summon is not once per turn. We will activate it once again. And unfortunately, like a dum dum, I activated it directly into the imperm column. 
which always feels nice. So y'all just don't forget the imprint column. Okay, just don't forget the imperm column. But again, so now we have the Ash, we have the imperm, and we even have a just straight up misplay because I decided to put it in the middle column like an idiot. And we still have the makings of a b strong board. We're going to go straight battle phase here. We're going to attack into the set black metal dragon. That's going to activate and then it's going to get a red eyes fusion. We're going to attack with 4,000 with Medionis and 500. Main phase two, we will go ahead because Mubit and Fafnir is an XC that attacked. We're just going to go for a Zeus line. And then with our two Dry Trial monsters left, we are going to XCs into Mubit and Fafnir, which sets us up a spell trap negate because we will want to stop that Red Eyes Fusion from getting something like a Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, which could cause some major issues. We're going to pass turn. They're going to use a Lure of Darkness. We're going to allow that to go through because we know that they have the fusion spell in hand. They're going to banish Red Eyes Black Dragon off of that Allure and then activate Red Eyes Fusion, which we will trigger the Mubeta Fafnir to stop. They're going to use our Gamma Eltonin, which is just absolutely insane. Pitching the Blackluster Soldier. I've never seen that happen before, but okay. And then they're just going to concede because they see the board is just utterly too strong. So we can eat again. I'm just going to reiterate. We had Ash, Imperm, and a huge misplay, and we still ended with Zeus, Spell Trap Negate, and two free pops. And we could have went further if I didn't mess up that play. So pretty insane, gotta say. All right, in this game, we are playing against Valence. We drew Jack in the Hand, Drytron Zeta Aldeba, Delta Altai, Alpha Thuban, and Drytron Nova. Pretty solid hand once more. We're gonna activate Jack in the Hand. They're gonna grab a card. We're gonna get Alpha Thuban. Then we're gonna activate Alpha Thuban pitching Zeta and try to go full combo. Summon, we're gonna grab a Cyber Angel Benton. And then Zeta in Graveyard, pitch the Benton, special summon itself out, get the Ritual spell. Benton effect, we're gonna get Diviner of the Herald. Xyz into Mu Beta Fafnir. Effect to pitch Gamma Eltonin, we are just popping off at this point. Normal Diviner of the Herald, pitch Herald of Arclight, grab Magician of Black Chaos Max. We're going to go full lock here. Activate Meteonis Drytron. Detach the Alpha Thuban that was attached to the Mu Beta Fafnir to get the Cyber Angel Ben 10 from the grave onto the field. And then we are going to activate Gamma Eltonin, tributing the Cyber Angel Ben 10, remember, because we're going to loop it. Get itself out and also special summon the Alpha Thuban as well. Ben 10 effect, we're going to search another Ben 10. Then we are going to Drytron Effect, reduce the Gamma attack by 1,000 to add it back to our hand. Then we are going to activate it once more, tribute the Alpha Thuban and the Zeta that was attached to the Mu Beta Fafnir to Special Summon Magician of Black Chaos Max. We are going to activate the Magician of Black Chaos Max, tribute our Gamma Eltonin so that our opponent cannot activate monster effects for the rest of this turn. So we don't need to worry about getting hand trapped it by anything except specifically Imperm, which at this point, I feel like they would have dropped it. We're going to link Diviner and the Magician of Black Chaos Max into Dynamondo. Dynamondo effect, we're going to shuffle the Mu Beta Fafnir and the Cyber Angel Ben 10 back into the deck. And we are going to end phase pass our turn. In the draw phase, we will activate Dynamondo, Tribute itself, get Magician of Black Chaos Max, activate its effect, Tribute itself, and now our opponent cannot activate any monster effects this turn. And this is where we discover they are playing Valence, and I was getting a little worried because it is a Pendulum deck, which means that they can still make some, I mean, pretty decent plays just through the Pendulum scales. So I was pretty nervous about where this was going to go. They're going to activate Crossbeam, Banish 6, and then go digging deep into their deck. They're actually going to grab the Lava Golem, which at this point, I was kind of expecting them to try to get two monsters on the field and just get a 3,000 beater, but they're actually going to make a pretty good play outside of that. They're going to get multiple bodies on the field here. Through their Valence plays, I won't go through the bother of actually explaining what all of them do because they have a lot of text, and this is not a Valence video, this is a Drytron video. 
they are actually going to small world using gamma eltonin as a bridge which was just absolutely hilarious to get scion the valence archer i, I i'm just it, it, i mean they had the gamma i mean that was the thing that they could do they're gonna activate it they're gonna bring itself back and then they're gonna make ninja shadow mosquito and at this point i was like well that's not really doing much it's zero attack and this none of this is quick effect so i'm not sure what it's doing battle phase they hit and then main phase two i realized they just wanted nexi on the field that they could go directly into zeus so even with the monster effect negations with the valence they were able to end on a zeus which by itself is pretty scary but not for us we're gonna start we're gonna activate zeta we're gonna pitch cyber angel benton get zeta out and grab Medionis Drytron. Benton effect, we'll grab Natasha. This is gonna be our threat. If we can get Natasha onto the field using its banish effect, then Zeus is threatened and they're gonna either have to activate it now or they're gonna let us steal it. Medionis Drytron effect, we're gonna reduce the attack of Zeta to get it back into our hand. Now we have both. We're gonna activate the Medionis. And we actually see an opportunity here. Instead of having to just go ahead and go straight Natasha, we are going to just hard summon Magician of Black Chaos Max and then activate its effect to make it so that Zeus can't use its effect anyway. And so now we can just play however we want. It's actually kind of incredible. We're gonna Nova, grab Beta Rastabon as a body to put on the field and then Meteor Strytron Tribute, get Natasha. Natasha effect will allow us to gain some life points. Not super relevant, but can be in the grind game. Alpha Thuban, tribute Natasha, grab Benton. Natasha effect, banish a Benton, crush summon itself out, and then snatch the Zeus. Now, all we're looking for is to try to hit game. We can get rid of this and get 8,000 on the field. It's over. We are going to activate Valence World, which is going to allow us, because these two were in the same column, I, using their own Valence World, can put it back into the, the column. So now all we need to do is get 8,000 on board, which is going to be really easy. We're going to activate Game at Ultanen, tributing the Cyber Angel Benton, get itself out, plus another body. Benton effect, search Benton. Delta Altaia effect, tribute the uh, Zeta. Get it out, reveal Benton, draw a card. Vanity's ruler is big. We'll XZ's into Mu Beta Fafnir. Fafnir. Dump the Medionis Draconis. Tribute Benten. Special summon the Beta. Benten effect. Search Artifact Lancia just as an extra thing that we can deal with. Then we put everything into attack. We just tribute our two monsters for a Vanity's Ruler. We don't even need the Ritual Monster here. This is plenty more game on board. And then we're just going to attack for game absolutely insane uh i mean again we even saw our opponent be able to play a little bit through our chaos max lock and put a zeus on field and it just i mean we had multiple answers for it this this deck actually just had the grind game all right in our last game here we're going to play against dark world we drew herald of orange light preparation of rights alpha thuban dracondis and another alpha Thuban. So we're going to have to make this hand work a little bit, but we end up making a pretty decent board. So in main phase one, we're going to activate Preparation of Rights. We're going to grab Cyber Angel Benton. We're going to activate Alpha Thuban, pitch Benton, special summon itself out, grab another Benton, and then Benton effect will grab Diviner of the Herald. Diviner, we're going to do our standard play with Herald of Arclight, but this time we're going to grab Medionis Rytron because I see an opportunity here to be able to try to go into at least something. Um, and we're going to try to end on Dracondis here. We're going to activate the Medionis Drytron. We are going to tribute both Alpha Thubans for Medionis Dracondis in defense to play around Lightning Storm. And then we will activate the Drytron to reduce this thing's attack by 1000 because we have it in defense anyway. There's really no point in doing that. There's really no point in not doing that. And then we literally just have to end phase. There's not a lot else that I could do here. But on the plus side, we do have a Herald of Orange Light to negate a monster effect if we need to. And we have Dracondis, which will pop up to two things. 
And by the way, it can't be targeted with monster effects. So they're going to Lure of Darkness. Saw a lot of that today, by the way. They're going to banish Graffa. They're going to activate uh, Genta. We're going to head over to Orange like that. I don't want them to start going off uh, with those plays. We're going to make them have extenders. They're going to activate the Gates of Dark World. We know we can deal with that with Dracundus, so we're not that threatened. Because remember, keep in mind that a field spell must be on the field at the end of a chain to resolve its effect. So whenever we pop it with Dracundus, it's not going to actually be able to do its effect. They are going to Bigfoot, and this was sort of the key point. If Bigfoot hit like a Dark World name, then they maybe pop off, right? But if Bigfoot hits literally anything else, we're pretty solid. They hit a Neko Main King. That's not a problem. Bigfoot comes out. They enter battle. They're going to attack, and they're going to pass the turn. And then we draw Zeta Aldiba, which is just incredible. We're going to Thuban. Tribute the Zeta. Grab Benton. Zeta, pitch Benton. Special summon itself. Grab Drytron. Medionis. Benton, grab Natasha. Move Beta Fafnir. We're going to pitch our Gamma. Medionis, Drytron. Grab Natasha. Gamma. Get it out with the Alpha Thuban. Go into another Mu Beta Fafnir. We're going for damage here. We're going for game. And then Natasha banish special summon, grab the Bigfoot, and this is more than enough for game. So I think what we really see here is one, the Mu Beta Fafnir's being 2000 is actually like pretty good because you can get two out on the field at the same time. And just these two plus your boss monster is enough for game. But then also you add Natasha on top of that. Like this is way, this is an overextension. This is too much. This wasn't necessary. Natasha by herself was plenty, right? So this kind of just shows how much potential this deck has to just get huge bodies on the board. So that's the deck. And honestly, it's pretty solid. Now, the reason why I did this testing Tuesday in particular was because I started seeing this deck a bit around my locals. And I really, I mean, I never knew what this deck did. And I peeked at the table a little bit and noticed that there was a Magician of Black Chaos Max on the board. And I was curious, so. Now that I've actually learned what the deck does, I feel more prepared for locals, but I also think just in general, this deck is still really powerful. It does lose a lot to Bestial since they can just banish your stuff. Um, and just banishing in general really does hurt this deck because it, it really is the graveyard is your second hand. But otherwise, if you can pop off, Chaos Max is insane. Mino Strakondis being able to destroy two things on your opponent's turn and it has protection, plus Natasha just being able to snatch something from your opponent. This deck has a lot of plays, and it's one of these decks that has so much play potential and extenders that in any given hand, for the most part, 9 out of 10 hands, you're going to be able to do something. And in the follow-up, you're going to be able to do something because, again... With the graveyard being your second hand, all of these cards are going to be live like 90% of the time, which is pretty insane. I think it's a pretty solid deck. Uh, if you're interested in playing a ritual spell deck, uh, ritual deck in general, this might just be the one for you if you're okay learning the basic combos. What do you think about the Drytron deck? Have you played it before? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know down in the comments section below and make sure that you put down any suggestions for other decks that you think that I should try it out. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying the content and hit the like button because it really helps me out. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.